Welcome to today's deep dive, uh, where we're diving into something that kind of sounds like it's straight out of science fiction, but it's totally real. Hmm. We're talking about synesthesia. Ever heard of it? It's really a fascinating phenomenon. Yeah. Essentially, synesthesia is a different way of experiencing the world where the senses get a little jumbled up. Jumbled up. Oh. How? So can you give us an example? Absolutely. Imagine listening to your favorite song, and as the music washes over, you, you see like vibrant colors dancing in perfect sync with the melody. Or maybe you're reading a book, and suddenly the words on the page have distinct tastes in your mouth. That's synesthesia, a neurological quirk where stimulating one sense involuntarily triggers experiences in another seemingly unrelated sense. So it's not just someone with synesthesia having like a really vivid imagination. They're actually experiencing these sensory blends as if they were actually happening. Exactly. It's not a conscious choice or something they're imagining. It's an automatic response hardwired into their brains. Wow. And it's not just limited to sound and sight. Uh -huh. We've documented over 80 different types of synesthesia. 80 different types. So someone could actually taste shapes, like we were joking about earlier. It might sound unbelievable, but yes. That's called lexical gustatory synesthesia, where words or numbers trigger specific tastes. Some people experience grapheme color synesthesia, where letters or numbers have inherent colors. Others have sound to color synesthesia, seeing colors when they hear music. The possibilities are incredibly diverse. That's mind blowing. It really makes you question what we think of as normal perception. But here's where it gets even more interesting. We're diving into a fascinating connection between synesthesia and another neurological phenomenon, autism. And it's a connection that researchers are finding more and more evidence for, which is leading to all sorts of new insights into how our brains work. So we're talking about autism and synesthesia. What kind of numbers are we looking at here when we talk about this connection? Well, we know autism affects approximately one in 44 children in the United States. And synesthesia is present in around 4% of the population. That's already quite a few people experiencing the world in these unique ways. But what's truly fascinating is that studies have found individuals with autism are significantly more likely to experience synesthesia compared to the general population. More likely by how much? That's a pretty strong link. It really is. Okay. While the exact figures can vary between studies, some research suggests that the prevalence of synesthesia among individuals with autism could be as high as 20% or even higher. That's a significant difference compared to the 4% we see in the general population. 20%. So that's like one in five people in the autism spectrum might also have synesthesia. Yeah. That definitely makes you wonder what's going on in the brain to create that kind of overlap. You're right. It really highlights how interconnected our sensory experiences can be. And that brings us to the million dollar question. Why is there this connection between autism and synesthesia? What's happening at a neurological level? Okay, so what are the theories? Give us the inside scoop. Researchers are still unraveling all the complexities, but one of the leading theories points to shared neurological factors. Think of it this way. Imagine the brain as a vast network of highways with information constantly flowing between different areas. In both autism and synesthesia, some of these highways might be rerouted, leading to unique ways of processing information. So it's like both autism and synesthesia might stem from some of the same wiring differences in the brain, but they manifest in very different ways. That's yeah. fascinating. It's like having different operating systems on the same computer hardware. You might have the same basic components, but the way they interact creates a completely different user experience. Exactly. And this brings up another crucial point. Synesthesia isn't inherently good or bad. It's simply a different way of experiencing the world. For some people with synesthesia, it's a source of joy, wonder, and even enhanced cognitive abilities. For others, it might be overwhelming or disorienting, especially in environments with a lot of sensory input. So it's all about how the individual experiences and manages those sensory connections, just like any other aspect of neurodiversity. Yeah. You mentioned enhanced abilities. Tell me more about that. What are some of the ways synesthesia can actually be beneficial? Think about it. If you experience numbers as having distinct colors, you might have a built-in advantage when it comes to math or memorizing sequences. It's like having a visual aid that most people don't have. That's incredible. I never thought of it that way. It's like your senses are working together to boost your abilities in certain areas. What other advantages have researchers found? Well, if music creates vivid visual landscapes for you, your creativity might be amplified. There's evidence suggesting that synesthesia can be linked to enhanced memory, stronger creative thinking, and even unique problem-solving skills. It's amazing to think that something that might seem challenging or different could actually unlock these hidden strengths. It really flips the script on how we think about different ways of experiencing the world, doesn't it? 
It really does. Synesthesia reminds us that diversity in how our brains are wired can lead to incredible strengths and unique perspectives. What may seem like a small difference in sensory processing can have a ripple effect on how we learn, create, and interact with the world around us. It's like opening a door to a whole new understanding of what the human brain is capable of. We often focus on the challenges of neurological differences. But synesthesia reminds us that these variations can also be a source of incredible strengths and unique perspectives. It really broadens your perspective. Absolutely. And the more we understand these variations, the better equipped we are to support and celebrate neurodiversity in all its forms. We're just scratching the surface of understanding how these differences shape our experiences and what they might mean for fields like education, art, and even technology. It really makes you wonder what other hidden connections are out there waiting to be discovered. We often categorize things as normal or different, but maybe it's all part of the same spectrum of human experience. So if you've ever felt like your senses were a bit intertwined or, you know, someone who experiences the world in a uniquely vibrant way, maybe just maybe it's synesthesia. What do you think? Could you have a touch of synesthesia without even realizing it? It's certainly possible synesthesia often goes unrecognized because people may not realize that their experiences are different from others. They might assume everyone sees colors when they listen to music or tastes shapes when they read words. It's like having a secret window into a world of extrasensory information. And you don't even realize that others might not be seeing the same view. This has been an incredible deep dive. I'm walking away with a whole new appreciation for the diversity of human experience and the incredible adaptability of the brain. What a fascinating journey into the world of synesthesia and its connection to autism. It truly is. And who knows, maybe some of our listeners are experiencing the world with a little more color and sound than they realized. If today's deep dive sparked your curiosity, we encourage you to explore further. There are some incredible resources available to learn more about synesthesia and neurodiversity. Until next time, keep those senses sharp and your mind open to the endless possibilities of the human experience. Thanks for joining us.